Here are 12 things that you are absolutely underestimating in Stardew Valley. The last one will change your life, so watch until the end. Enjoy. There are tons of animals in this game, and yes, they are not made equally. There are indeed some animals that are just considerably better than others. Like the golden chicken, of course. This thing is insane, even if it is out of your reach. Fortunately, we have other incredible animals like the mighty pig and even the ostrich. These suckers will make you rich either with their highly valuable produce or by selling them for a massive chunk. Then we have the inferior animals like all of the rest, right? Wrong, you have never been so wrong in your life. The other animals in this game can be incredible money makers if used correctly. Cows are simple, just milk them, make cheese and use that to stay healthy in the mines. Goats on the other hand are great, large goat milk will make gold quality cheese. Age these in casks in your basement to make more efficient money than ancient fruit wine. Yeah, I did not misspeak. Then we have sheep, sheep produce wool, happy sheep produce iridium quality wool. Drop these into a loom to have a chance to create two pieces of cloth. Mayonnaise is not that profitable but since chickens produce eggs every single day this can add up very quickly if utilized correctly. Ducks are cute and can swim, good enough. The animals in Stardew Valley are done being underestimated. I have seen many people just absolutely ridicule the fishing tackle in this game. Yes, the trap barber fishing tackle is amazing against the legendary fish. The corp fishing tackle will make your fishing bar so massive. It won't even feel like you are playing the same mini game. And then the rest? All garbage, right? Okay, I will admit that the lead fishing tackle is absolutely useless, but some of the others are actually quite good. The dressed spinner will allow you to catch so many fish you will most definitely run out of inventory space in no time. The treasure hunter will help you get treasure, especially if you pair it with magnets and the pirate profession. The barbed hook will allow you to catch fish without even paying attention to the game. It will move the fishing bar for you. And the quality barber will help you catch iridium quality fish without a perfect catch. They all have a good use, except for that wretched lead barber, of course. Of course you will upgrade the watering can, you need to water your crops, right? Yes, you will upgrade your axe and your pickaxe so that you can crush resources quicker. And yeah, that hoe is obviously getting upgraded but what about your trash can yeah i know you trash items i saw you do that and yeah over time you will be trashing many many items ever had to make a tough decision which do i trash well with an upgraded trash can this decision is ever so slightly easier an iridium quality trash can will reclaim 60 percent of the value of the item that you trash do the right thing trash responsibly it's not as useless as one might think Coffee is a beverage that you and I use and abuse. You're not going to the gym without pre-workout, right? So why would you go anywhere without your coffee? Yeah, we all utilize coffee for its speed benefits and we all underestimate its money-making potential. As you know, coffee can grow in both spring and summer and each bean can and will yield up to four beans per harvest every two days. So just grow a bunch of coffee around a Junimo hut and completely forget about it until all of the coffee is dead. Then grab those coffee beans and run them through your kegs. It takes 5 beans to make coffee and it only takes 2 in-game hours. So with enough kegs you can turn all of your beans into coffee within a single day. Coffee only sells for 150 gold, wait how is this valuable? Well, keep half then you won't have to buy coffee from Gus for 300 gold each. And the rest, sell it for some extra change. Why you do be ignoring cooked foods in this game? Why do you only use the random spicy eel drops from serpents in the mines? You know that food in this game is actually just broken, right? Stardew Valley does not have diminishing returns. This means that your skill level can exceed level 10. Food makes this possible. Food with fishing benefits will increase the size of your fishing bar. Look at how massive mine is. This isn't even fair, right? The attack bonus from food will significantly increase your damage. Defense buffs will allow you to tank any enemy that dares come near you. Food with farming buffs will allow you to harvest iridium quality crops. This works especially well on sweet gem berries since they cannot be processed. Oh and don't you dare forget about the food that gives you a luck boost. Heading into the mines with the best possible luck and some luck boosts is just incredible, nothing quite compares. And lastly, if you max out your foraging skill, you'll be able to harvest 4 salmon berries per bush, which is cool, but not quite as good as the rest.
spring, summer, fall, and then spend the rest of winter on Ginger Island. What is wrong with you? Winter is not to be underestimated. Winter is the season where you can drastically change the layout of your farm and decorate. Winter is the season where you can grow countless winter seeds, turn the crystal fruit into wine and make a killing, and most importantly stockpile the rest and turn them into winter seeds that you can then use to make tea tree saplings. And I don't think I need to tell you how rich these can make you. They sell for 500 gold each. It's the best early game money out there. Do you see this cutscene? You'll be rewarded with a stupid useless copper pan. You can use these on shimmering spots around the valley to get some stone or something. Yeah, you can also use it to get a lucky ring, which is really nice, but what about after that? Now what? Do you trash it? No, you imbecile. The copper pan might not be that great in most of the valley, however, the dig site is absolutely rigged. Someone explained the math on a Reddit post, but let's not get all nerdy about it. Basically, the dig site will spawn many shimmering spots. Constantly throughout the day. If you want a chill day where you just pan a bunch and get some free loot while you're at it, the dig site is the place to be. The copper pan sucks, except for in this one specific spot, then it's pretty damn good. Why are you always raging about the infinity gavel? Yes, it can wipe out entire waves of enemies in a heartbeat. Yes, it does have a broken special move that makes the game easy, but who wants it easy? Easy is for the weak. So then what about the infinity blade? This thing is just as easy. It has a massive attack range, attacks incredibly fast and does massive damage. It's just as gosh darn good. Naturally, I am talking about the dagger, a weapon that needs some actual skill to use. When used correctly, the dagger can indeed be your best friend. It'll one-shot enemies in spectacular fashion. Yeah, you might take damage all the time due to the weird attack angles and horrific range, but it's worth the rush. Try the dagger out sometime. You will regret it. It takes so much effort to unlock the bone mill and then it's just a piece of garbage that barely does anything right. Gunther wants 100 bone fragments to get a silly machine that turns bones into fertilizer. What is the point? Don't be silly with the addition of Ginger Island, we can now get bone fragments in a huge surplus. At the dig site you will find bone covered rocks, these give bones. And you will always find random bones and artifacts in the mines and in geodes. Once donated, what do you use them for? Just drop them into these bone molds to get fertilizer, deluxe speed grow, quality fertilizer and even tree fertilizer. These are highly valuable and if you are still not convinced, go give them a try and watch your profit margin skyrocket. Speaking of tree fertilizer, you need this stuff. How could you avoid this incredible gift that Mr. Concerned Ape has given us? As you might know, planting trees is incredibly tedious and annoying. Trees will randomly grow each day. They will not grow in sync and it'll look like a mess. We need some order. Fortunately, tree fertilizers are absolutely game changing. They will force any tree to go through a stage every single night. All of your trees with tree fertilizer will grow at the same rapid rate. No need to sit and wonder if your tree might grow a little tonight. It is just a guarantee now. Star fruit, ancient fruit, sweet gem berries. Yeah, yeah, I get it. These crops are going to make you stack. They will make you rich. You won't have anything to spend that money on. But there are crops in this game that will make you absolutely no money, yet they are still incredibly useful in their own way. One of these is wheat. Wheat grows in both summer and fall. Wheat only takes four days to grow, so you could plant an entire field of wheat and just wait for it to rain four times and yeah, that's a whole lot of wheat ready for harvesting without any watering from you. Wheat provides both wheat that you can turn into beer that you can then give to Pam just before you go to the desert and it also yields hay that you can use to feed your animals. But that's not nearly as important as this. Grow wheat on the last day of summer on all of your tilled soil. Then when it hits fall, harvest that wheat. Would you look at that? Your tilled soil has survived the change of season. Now you do not have to re all of that and that is what makes wheat incredible. You are sleeping on rain totems. If you have ever planted 500 crops on your farm without any sprinklers, you know the pain of having to water everything by hand just to immediately sleep because you are out of energy. Rain totems will allow you to grow as many crops as your heart desires without having to ever water them yourself or even bother with sprinklers. Just focus on getting pigs as early as possible, place tappers on as many pine trees as you can and you will be printing rain totems with ease. Then use a rain totem every day now the rest of the day you can actually play the game instead of worrying about watering these pesky plants. Enjoy your new fortune.
That was 12 things that you keep underestimating in Stardew Valley. And this video has 9 things that you absolutely cannot live without. Thanks for watching, but for now, I will see you in the next video.